Hey guys, for today's video we're going to be talking about setting up input shaping on the Creality Sonic Pad. So I'm going to give a quick explanation of what input shaping is. Uh, I'll also post a link to Clipper's documentation on it below. It's also known as resonance compensation, but the short version of it is as your print head's moving, as your print bed's moving, and there's deceleration and acceleration, it causes your printer to shake a little bit. That shaking can cause defects in your print and it can force you to slow down your speed. What input shaping does is think of it as noise cancellation for your 3D printer. It, it counteracts that shakiness. So if you look at the Clipper documentation, you'll see there's a manual way to set it up. Luckily, Creality included one of these guys in the Sonic Pad. Basically, it's an accelerometer. Um, it measures movement, and they added some tests into the firmware so that you can run all these tests manually. It saves a lot of time and effort. Just a quick note before we get started. If you're using the original SonicPad firmware, the procedure is a little bit different. They've added some new things as far as input shaping to the newest version of the firmware. Personally, I'm using the December 2022 upgrade. Uh, I'll explain the differences at the end of the video, but just be aware, it might be a little bit different than what you're seeing. Having said that, always a good idea to upgrade your firmware, especially with a new product like this. Creality seems to be on a pretty good track of adding new features so far. So, uh, good idea to upgrade your firmware. I'll be posting another video about that shortly. And, uh... As always, if you like the videos, please subscribe. It really helps me out. Um, like the videos, and uh, we'll get started. As always, I'm going to be using my Creality CR10S Pro V2 for this video. My understanding is the USB stick for the Sonic Pad has some parts you can print to mount the accelerometer directly to the printer. In the case of the CR10S, series i don't know that there are any parts i don't believe there are so we're going to be uh doing it a little differently what we're going to do first is remove the hot end cover from the printer once we get the hot end cover off to the side we're going to take a piece of double-sided tape and put the accelerometer on top of the bl touch like so. Once we've done that, we're just going to put the hot end cover back into place and screw it back in. Okay, once you have all that in place, you're going to go up to the Sonic Pad. And you're going to go to Configure, More Settings, Advanced Settings, and Resonance Compensation. You're going to choose the type of printer you have. Usually it's the one on the left. The Sonic Pad is going to check and make sure that the accelerometer is attached. Once it says OK, you hit OK. And from there, your printer is going to home all three axes. Once your printer finishes homing, you're going to see your print head start a jiggling back and forth. Basically, it's trying to move the x-axis at various different frequencies. It takes a couple minutes, and uh, you're going to see it moving faster. It gets to the point where you barely even see the thing moving, because um, it's going through a whole range of frequencies. Give that a few minutes to finish, and then we can move on to the next step.
Once the x-axis is finished, you're going to move on to the y-axis. You're just going to hit OK for the screen here. And then you're going to move the accelerometer. Um, basically, I just yanked it off of the BL touch with the double-sided tape. And I'm going to put it as close as I can to the center of the print, head, print bed. Once you have that set up, you're going to hit OK, and the same thing is going to happen only this time. Instead of your print head moving, it's going to be your print bed moving. You'll see it uh, start to bounce back and forth. Same thing, it's going to start being pretty evident that it's moving, but as it goes through the frequencies, you're going to see it less and less. Have faith, the accelerometer is measuring, even if the movements are very small. And once the y-axis is done, you're just going to hit OK. Remove the sensor, obviously. And then you're going to be prompted to restart your printer. Just go ahead and do that, and that is it. You have adjusted for resonance compensation. Like I said, that'll help a lot with ringing and things like that in your prints and allow you to get a better speed before you have any kind of distortion. One last thing I wanted to mention for anyone that hasn't updated the firmware for the Sonic Pad is the original firmware versions would calibrate the X and the Y axis at the same time while the accelerometer was on the print head. Um, while, while it works, I'm sure, I think a better way to calibrate the y-axis is by actually putting the accelerometer on the item that's moving, in this case, the print bed. Though what you want to do if you are in that situation is let both tests finish, because there's no way to stop it. It automatically moves to the y-axis. Once it's all done, go into the web interface for clipper slash sonic pad move the accelerometer stick it onto the print bed and then you're going to type the following shaper underscore calibrate base axis equals y what that command will do when you send it is manually start the calibration for only the y-axis. So it, it'll leave the settings that you already have for the x-axis, but it will go ahead and take care of the y-axis just to give you a little bit better um, accuracy during the testing. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, this will definitely help your print speeds um, before you have any kind of distortion. Again, I, I erred a little bit towards the side of caution, but since I've installed Clipper slash Sonic Pad, I went from about 50 millimeters per second. Right now, I do usually 150 just to be safe, but for simple objects, calibration cubes and stuff, I've printed them at 180 without any problems. And that's all there is. Um, again, guys, if you like the videos, please subscribe, click the like button, and I will see you next time. Thanks.